Intermittent fasting has been found to help memory, weight loss, heart health, and more. Now there's some new research that shows that it could also be helpful in fighting cancer, at least in mice. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're having a great day. I'm a board certified pediatrician in Tampa. My practice is holistic pediatrics and family care where we take care of both adults and as well as children. I was first myself introduced to intermittent fasting uh, by a surgeon when I had to have the tumor removed from my pancreas approximately eight or nine years ago. And he had kind of gently but firmly said, hey, the more belly fat that you can lose before I have to cut through that, the easier that your recovery will be and to do the procedure. And then he suggested doing intermittent fasting, which I actually found to be quite helpful after the first few days of being rough. But uh, I've used it since then, and it does seem to be a helpful way for me to, to keep weight off while still being able to enjoy the foods that I like. Now, we're going to talk a little bit today about what intermittent fasting actually is, um, this new study on intermittent fasting and cancer, and potentials for the future of this um, in terms of fighting cancer off that may not even need the use of the fasting itself, but the mechanisms involved into why we think it's helping, which I'll get into in a little bit. Now, of course, if you do like what you're hearing here, please subscribe, please uh, share this video with others, and please like it so we can get the word out more. All right. So first of all, what is intermittent fasting? Now, the hallmark of this is not so much what a person eats, although, of course, that is kind of important. OK, um, it's more focusing on when a person eats and when they do not eat. So the fasting that's involved, you know, many people never even thought of the fact that when we eat with them, when we eat breakfast, we are breaking a fast from overnight. Intermittent fasting takes it a little longer than that, which we'll get into. But at the same time, that's actually where the word breakfast came from, if you didn't know. Now, why is this done? Well, what happens is that there's something called um, metabolic switching. So glucose, sugars, are the easiest way for our bodies to turn um, calories into energy. It's right there. Of course, if we're eating a lot of sugar or a lot of carbs, it's, there's a lot there to turn into energy. Where And it takes it's not until the those energy molecules from the carbs are consumed does the body then start to burn fat. So you have to be not eating carbs for long enough to make that switch over. Now, um, and, and again, for some people, it could be a few hours, but the longer that you go into the fast, the more this is going to happen. But we, we'll talk a little bit of how to do that safely. Now, of course, if a person is eating three meals a day and maybe snacking, maybe having some juice, maybe having a soda, they're never going to be moving themselves into that fat burning mode. Of course, if they're not exercising, that's going to make it even more so because, of course, when we exercise, we increase our metabolism, we burn up calories faster, and potentially the faster we can get to a burned off all of the carbohydrates. Okay, so there are different food regimens, eating regimens that are employed when it comes to intermittent fasting. Um, one of them is, is referred to as windows. There are certain windows that you eat. There are certain windows that you don't. So a common one that people will do would be, say, like a 16 hours of fasting and they eat during an eight-hour period, maybe eating between, say, noon and 8 p.m. So you can get in a lunch, you can get in a snack, you can get in a dinner. Um, you could probably eat as, really as much as you want, although we, of course, want you to eat healthy food um, during that. But it's really after that, that's when they start to come in. But some people uh, may not be able to handle that. So they'll do maybe a 10-hour eating window with a 14-hour break. Some people can handle more than that and may even do a 6-hour eating window and an 18-hour fast during the day. Okay, But, of course, the longer that you're fasting, the more the fat burns. Now, there's also what's called the five to two approach where a per person would eat nat normally for them for five days, but then two days out of that week, not back to back, they would eat only maybe 350, 500, I shouldn't say that, 500 to 600 calories in a single meal, and then they're fasting for the rest of those times as well, okay? Now, in terms of longer fastings, um, there is really, I've seen nothing that shows that there's a health benefit to doing longer fastings. and that could actually be a little bit more harmful for people. So we're not talking about long extended fast, not talking about the type of fasting that I would perhaps or a Jewish person would do on Yom Kippur, which could be a 26 to 27 hour fast once. 
Um, and of course, it doesn't mean something, you know, something like Ramadan, which is actually kind of an intermittent fast because they're just in, eating in during the, uh, you know, during the nighttime hour. So it kind of can be, I guess it depends on also the time of the year, how, how long or short the day is, because Ramadan, I know, can change throughout um, with cycles can change to different times of the year as well, whether it's winter or summer. Okay, so um, now in terms of this new study regarding intermittent fasting and cancer, so this was done in mice, okay, um, and so I'm going to go a little sciencey on you guys now um, to kind of explain what this is about, but I think you'll follow along. Okay, so what they were doing is they were looking at a type of white blood cell called natural killer cells. Now, for the most part, our immune system fights infections or anything foreign due to memory. You see it the first time. You build up memory cells, antibodies, etc., and then you're there to fight it the next time. That's the um, that's how vaccines work. That's wh um, how when why kids get sick during their first couple years of life, um, or at least first couple years when they're exposed to other people, but then they don't get typically get sick as often um, as they get older. And of course, if immunity wanes as a person is a uh, more of a senior, because we know that immunity gets a little weaker, then of course it give you those issues as well. But with the natural killer cells in particular, that is not required. That memory is not required. It's like a built-in what we call innate cell that can, it can just identify this ain't supposed to be here and then fight it off okay now um and when it comes to cancer the more natural killer cells that are at a cancer tumor site the better it is to fight it off now um in terms of but part of the challenge here and this is where the intermittent fasting comes in is that often the environment of a tumor is not hospitable for our immune systems to actually grow. And the reason for that seems to be that the tumors will eat up all of those nutrients, the carbs, proteins, etc., cetera, um, which allows it to grow rapidly. Um, but if that's the case, then at the site of the tumor, those other nutrients aren't gonna be there for those cancer-fighting cells, those natural killer cells, etc. cetera. Um, and, and what's left behind is more of like this lipid fat type of um, substance, which again, isn't as effectively typically used by the natural killer cells. Now, here's what happens though with intermittent fasting. It reprograms the intermittent, the natural killer cells to actually be able to use those fats in that environment. Um, they can, and so they actually can survive more. They can, they're, they're able, it's the toxic environment of the tumor. Tumor is able to be overcome because of this reprogramming of the natural killer cells. Um, now, and what they did in the study is that they denied food to mice, um, for 24 hours, twice a week. And then they started measuring and checking to see where the white blood, these uh, white blood cells, these natural killer cells went. And what they found is that first of all, of course, as you'd expect, the fasting caused the glucose levels to drop. Um, um, and then their levels of what are, of these free fatty acids to go up. Now, free fatty acids, they're a type of fat that can be used as an alternative energy source. Okay. Um, when other nutrients are scarce, like when you hear about omega fatty acids, acids as an example those are free fatty acids um they're not bound to things they're just free there to serve as a calorie source and as you may know if you ever look at the um at the back of a nutrient um panel for any food you will always see that for the same number of grams you'll see that fat has more calories per gram because that that's what it is so um of course you have to be able to burn it off in order to, to turn it properly, which is why you have to get to that stage. But that's really why, if you look at the back, that's why you'll always see more calories um, from, from that versus proteins or carbs. Now, as far as what happened with these natural killer cells, they learned to use those fatty acids as fuel instead of the glucose, which would normally be what they are, um, their food source that they would normally survive on. So what that does is it optimizes their cancer fighting ability, because as we said, if the fats are in the tumor, in that environment, and the natural killer cells, because of the fasting, is learning to now burn those the, the fat in the um, for energy, then the, the, the cells that are at the site, they can work better. And again, as I said, they can fight it off. Um, and so... Um, now, there's a couple other really interesting things that the intermittent fasting was found to do in these mice um, um, for the natural killer cells. So first of all, they found that a lot of times these cells, the natural killer cells would move and migrate to the bone marrow. OK, and in the bone marrow, they were exposed to high levels of a protein called interleukin 12. That's a cytokine. Remember when I talk about cytokine storms and inflammatory markers, this is one of those cytokines. But once it's there. The um, it, the exposed um, natural killer cells, when they're exposed to the interleukin-12, they actually make another protein called interferon gamma, and that plays a crucial role in fighting off cancer. Um, 
Also in the spleen, the natural killer cells also can learn even better there to use the lipids, the fat, as fuel. Um, and so they're kind of pre-primed again so that once they leave the spleen, they can then go to the tumor and fight better because they've been programmed better. Now in humans, of course, things don't always play well in mice, but this is kind of general um, mammal um, physiology here. So they did, did some side things, and they did find that in, in humans that the researchers also found that blood can, um, samples from cancer patients in general showed also had reduced circulation of natural killer cells um, because, of again, in the natural state, they wouldn't normally be there because they weren't able to survive. And so it does suggest that a similar type of um, reaction is happening in, adult, in humans as well. So if we could increase the natural killer cells um, like we could in, in mice, then that could help out us all fight off cancer if we were to have it. Now, in terms of what's with the future for this, so there are actually clinical trials underway um, that would look at, that's looking at, of course, the safety of intermittent fasting, because, of course, we need to make sure that, you know, people who have cancer, especially if they're doing chemo or other things, they may not want to eat. And all of a sudden, we may be telling people now you have to fast. And so we need to make sure that that is obviously a safe thing for people to do. And can they get enough calories overall if they can't eat a lot during that window? Um, there's also the possibility that they could develop pharmaceutical agents that can simulate the same type of natural killer cell stimulation through those cytokines without needing the intermittent fasting. And that's pretty interesting. Um, but it's also possible that they may even be able to take the natural killer cells, put it in a fasting state outside the body, you know, culture then there and then reintroduce it kind of like they do with stem cells in a way um, where they then reintroduce it in the body in such a way that it can then fight the good fight better. Um, and now, a very interesting thing, which is going to take a lot longer to figure out, could it be possible that intermittent fasting be a preventing thing for cancer? Makes sense. Kind of does, right? And if you're doing it safely, that may be a good idea for all of us. Now, to be clear, when I talk about all of us, we do need to make sure that not only is a person um, eating um, um, healthy, but please re realize I am not advocating for children to be intermittent fasting. Okay, this needs to be something that's done as a grown up. Okay. Um, but if you are choosing to do intermittent fasting, be aware that the first couple of days, especially during the end of that fast, it can be rough. You can be hungry. You have to fight through. But at least in my experience, by the third day, and I've done this twice now where I've really trying to set it in, by the third day, you don't feel hungry anymore. Okay. Even like for me, it's interesting at the end of my uh, day long fast on Yom Kippur, by the time I get to about 20 hours in, I don't feel hungry anymore. It kind of passes. It's really interesting. Interestingly, at that point, I have the ketones kicking, and I actually can get kind of high as a kite, which is really fun. And I actually don't want to break my fast, but of course, I have to eventually. But those last few hours, I, I don't know if it's part of the whole spiritual aspect of why we do fasting in the first place, man, but I kind of enjoy those last few hours. Um, but of course, if you do have a glucose metabolism issue, such as diabetes, please do not do this on your own, especially if you're used doing, um, you know, taking insulin or some other medication that controls um, a person's blood sugar. You need to work with a healthcare provider on this to make sure that you're doing it safely. You may need to be monitoring your blood glu glucose levels during, at least during those first few days to make sure that you're not getting yourself into a hypoglycemic state that could be problematic. All right. So maybe you learned something new. I like to teach. So uh, there you go. Have a great day.